So I am compositing some of the head parts and I'm just rough cutting them out and playing a little bit with transforming their scale using Command T, holding down Shift in Photoshop just to stretch them a little bit. And as long as you're informed by a sketch and have a certain angle, I'm also looking at how I want the neck to connect, then you're pretty safe playing with your reference. I tend to overdo the heads a lot because I want the head not to be just from one creature. So I also found this, this black mohawk that I thought was pretty great. I'm gonna bring that over. I'm gonna rough select around the mohawk. Again, with lots of overlap, I'm not trying to cleanly cut it out yet. Then I'm going to duplicate. and delete the source material and then bring it on. So now I've got kind of like an Elvis duck going on. Now, so far I have already five layers, I guess four layers that are all just the head. So I'm gonna select all those layers and I think that's enough for the head to play with. Yeah, I think that's enough. So what I'm going to do is selecting all four, I'm going to click on the folder icon at the bottom of the layers, and that's going to put them into what's called a group. A group collects the layers together, and I can label that group. By keeping it all in a group, it allows me to use the move tool and move them all together as a group instead of as individual parts. I just want to click auto select off. So if I just need to move everything down so I can fit it in, grouping it does that. Though I can still work on things individually. I put, put some of these this colorful plumage in and I can play with the order of things and with where everything should go. But before, before I get into how I cut it out and arrange it all, I've given myself a lot of neck to transition. Also notice that all the reference, even though it's high resolution, because this is photographic, some of it's not as cle cleanly in focus as you might want it. So that's very sharp and in focus, but this back edge is not. So I don't want to rely on that back edge. So I'm just going to immediately cut a lot of that out of that reference. But luckily, where the mohawk is, there is quite a bit of, of clean edged focus there. And we might talk about the little ways in which we can increase the focus using things like the sharpen tool. This is an illusion. All it does is detect edges and then increase the contrast on those edges. But it can help. So it might be something we play with here. We're gonna talk a lot about textures and transitioning but I love this little spiky black crown on little bits of red. That's gonna go really well with this. And I like the, uh, the quality of detail in the eye. And the reason I don't use sharpen or blur as direct tools very often is because they take so long to process. <laughs> All right. It also reminds me, whenever something takes a long time to process, it reminds me to save my work. 
So as soon as this clears, I'm gonna go to File and then Save As. And just like I did for my landscape assignment, I'm gonna start with the semester code here, making a Frankenstein's monster out of different creatures, compositing them together. Organizing it into my folder. So I have my sketch that gets posted to Canvas. Whoops, not moved to the trash. And I have the Photoshop document I'm working on. Okay, now it's time to think of other parts. What does the head go into? I've got a lot of overlap transition for that neck to go into a body. So based on my sketch, I looked for a pangolin. This is the best I could find on Pixabay. And it's not great because it's very cropped off. Right? But some of that, like maybe that neck area transition I can use. Maybe I could use this part of the tail as something. But it is cropped and it's covered by a hand. So it is high quality. It's not exactly what I need. And it's not as big as I would like. So that's just something I'll put off to the side. But when I looked for armadillo, I found more options and higher quality, even though the color is really off. So maybe before I even cut it out, maybe I can rasterize it and play with the color by going to image adjustments, first playing with levels, using my head as a guide for how many highlights and shadows I want. what limits I want there to be. Try not to lose any pixel definition. And then this is a very warm photograph. So if I go to color balance and I push the midtones more towards the blues and the cyans, it's gonna bring it more into the temperature of this lighting. And then in highlights, I can do the same. But then in shadows, do the opposite. So that might be useful. And now I'm cutting out what I think might work for the neck and body. Don't need that ear. I don't want the stuff that's not in good focus. Remember, I can always hold down shift and add to my selection. I want to get that little spike there. Maybe some of this hair here. A lot of this will be about transitioning textures into textures. All right, so make a duplicate of that. That cut out and then delete the layer underneath it. And then I can play with Command T, oh, wrong layer. Command T. Maybe I even flip this, rotate it, thinking of it as some sort of shell, but no, oh, let's see. Yeah, not all that useful. So I might have to rely on other reference. And that's why 
using really exotic reference can sometimes be a pain. Something like this might work a little bit more easily, though the colors are not all that interesting, but it all seems to be in focus. It's even got a tail that maybe I can work with. Duplicate that. Delete the source. And then Command T, rotate it, and play with it. My computer is taking some time, so I'm going to close some other programs. Not like I have a whole lot open. All right. So that might work as a shell. And then the head will go on top of it there. And I don't want to grow it bigger than this, but luckily it's big enough for my sketch, right? So we want to use the native resolution and only shrink down from that. And then because this is so drab, I can play with the colors. If I want just a really quick uh, mess with the colors, I can just go to auto tone. And that will balance the histogram for me. Because this is so warm, I expect the auto tone to push it a little bit more neutral. Usually this doesn't take any time at all. <laughs> but there you go. So that, that pushes it more neutral. I'm going to save because I'm worried about how long this is taking. And then I can play with the levels to get a little bit more contrast in that. any day now. So when Photoshop is running really slow like this, I'll often just save my work and restart it. And it's usually because I have too many things on the scratch disk. So I can adjust the levels a little bit, get a little bit more depth in those shadows. So I'm thinking I'll use that as the shell of my sketch. Maybe I'll use this piece in the front as kind of a breast piece, like a chest plate that goes between the arms. So it's a little experimental, trying to fulfill the vision of your sketch with your sources. I'm going to try the auto tone, and that's going to take some of that warmth out. And then I'm going to rotate it. And yeah, that might go on the chest. So this becomes kind of a front and back shell. Remember, you can also use things like distort and warp within reason. This is like the underside of a turtle or something. And this is the back shell. I'm not thrilled with the new version of Photoshop and how it doesn't show you a transform box until you actually click on it. I guess I'll get used to that, but that is a change. So when you hit Command T in Photoshop, it's not like pick Photo P where you get the transform box immediately to show up. Instead, you have to kind of click on it to see the corners. And that might be a glitch they're working on. I'm not sure. All right. So that's what I have of the body so far. I thought some colorful chameleon spines might be useful. So I'm going to cut some of those out. It's easy to overdo it. So be mindful. You're only required to use five. I've already gone well above that. 